Please, please welcome from the USC School of Music, Taylo Harding. Hey, everybody. I love music. Who out here loves music? Yeah, of course. Goodness, every, every, everybody loves music. Somebody tell me why. Who wants to tell me why they love music? Come on, there's got to be someone who's willing to raise their hand, tell me why they love music. Yes, ma'am. It's always got the feel of the... It always captures your feeling. Interesting, very good, that's true. I heard somebody say something about happy, did I? Right, it makes you happy. One other. Anybody? I'm sorry? It makes us dance. It does something physically to us that makes us want to do something different than we're doing at that moment. All of those things fit into what I want to talk a little bit about today and then feed in nicely to what I want to spend the most of the time talking about. What we know about music is, unlike most activities in our lives, it does five things for us when we engage with it on a relationship somewhere on what I call the music relationship continuum. And those five things are it makes us happier, healthier, safer, more hopeful, and more fulfilled. There aren't many things in life, activities in which we engage, that do all five of those. We talked about happiness a second ago. We talked about being healthy and dancing. We talked about it, it just came up briefly. Well, I want to spend a moment, more than a moment today, talking about music and hopefulness because it's not often that we think about music making us more hopeful. I could ask all day why we love, love music, and no one would ever bring up it makes us more hopeful. And that's okay. Music makes us more hopeful in one of two ways, either subconsciously or consciously. Now, you might not think you can be made to be more hopeful subconsciously, but music can do it. It's why you seek the music experience in the first place that you're having. When I walked out here today, I had those headphones on, jamming out a little bit to some, you know, something on my, my uh, uh, Walkman, my iPod, my MP3 player. Um, and at that moment, I was just really at the, my engagement with music was just very much at the surface. I was thinking about this talk. I was thinking about how many empty seats there are. I was thinking about this, you know, it's not lit well enough or whatever. I wasn't really thinking about the music, but it was there and I wanted it there. It was making the environment better. We didn't have anyone talk about music lifting your mood. It does that. It's important. That's an important thing that music does for us. But at the subconscious level is where we're concerned with music when we're just listening to it in that way. When we've got it on in the car and we're driving from one place to another. When we have it on our headphones and we're cleaning the house or working out or running. Or when we're sitting in the dentist's office waiting for that drill. Music there lifts our mood. It paints this this environment for us. It is what my friends call the sonic wallpaper of your experience at the moment. At that time, everything we know about music is subconscious. We're not thinking about it. We're into whatever we're doing. But because music unfolds over time, and because in that time, music will build tension and release, sometimes very dramatically, sometimes very simply, we are drawn to it whether we know it or not. It's because we desire that tension and release. We're drawn to that, even subconsciously. So even though you're not paying attention, you're doing something, and you want to get from this moment in time in your life to this moment in time, and then the next, and then the next, and then the next, music is out there, but you're not paying much attention to it. It's making things better. You are what I call living by music. You're getting to the next moment, and music is out there by you. You're living by it. It has great power even then, even at its most shallow and superficial, it has great power then to deliver happiness and healthiness and safety and security and fulfillment and hopefulness and you don't even know it. And it's because you've sought the experience physically of being next to the, the building of tension and the release. The building of tension and release allows us to anticipate what's coming next. And when we anticipate what's coming next, even if it's subconscious, we're being more hopeful at its most fundamental level. Now, I'm going to talk about how music makes us more hopeful consciously in just a second. But before I do that, I want to engage in a little exercise with you all. 
right now you don't have to stand up to do this, but we are going to do a audience participation exercise. You can sit in your seats. I'm going to start with this section over here. I'm going to clap a rhythm. You're going to listen to it, and then you're going to clap it back to me. It's a little pattern. We'll do it once, and then I'll move on to the next sections, and then in a moment we're going to put it all together. So listen carefully, just this third. I'm going to clap this pattern. I want you to listen to it and then clap it back to me, okay? One, two, here, listen. Rest. 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 Okay, y'all do it with me. One, two, ready, go. One, two, and three. Rest. 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 You guys are like Andrew Sohn. Um, that was really good. All right, this section here. Your pattern, a little different. Listen to me do it and then clap it back to me. One, two, listen here. One, rest, three, four, and one, rest, three, four, and one, rest, three, four, and one, rest, three, four, and. Okay? A little more complicated. You guys, I, I, I was telling people backstage, you all looked smarter in the middle, so... <laughs> Okay, I made you forget it, but here we go. One, two, ready, go. One, rest, three, four, and 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 one. Wow, excellent. Okay, you guys, same thing, another pattern. I'm gonna count, I'm gonna clap a pattern, you're gonna clap it back to me. Only this time we're not gonna stop. You're gonna keep going. And then we're gonna add this section, and then we're gonna add this section. Once we do that, I'm gonna play a little bass line with you. And then we're all going to sing while we're clapping <laughs> at my lead. And you'll know what to sing. It'll be in instantly, you'll know exactly what to sing when you hear me start it. Okay, this section, here is your pattern. One, two, ready, go. Rest, one, two, three, and four, and one, two, three, rest, one, two, three, and four, and. Okay, ready? One, two, ready, go. One, two, three. Rest, one, two, three, and four, and one, two, three, rest, one, two, three, keep going, one, rest, one, two, three, and four, and one, two, three, rest, one, two, ready, one, two, and three, rest, one, two, and three, rest, one, two, and three, rest, one, two, and three, one, rest, three, four, and one, rest, three, four, and one, rest, three, four, and one. Oh, that's great. Okay, softer now, softer. Okay, keep going. Hey, hey, baby. I want to know, will you be my girl? Excellent. Great. Who's happier? <laughs> Who's more fulfilled? Excellent. Now, around you, you're going to see friends. But if you look beyond just the people around you, you're going to see a couple of strangers. Make eye contact with a stranger right now, if you would, just for a second. You don't have to get up. Just look around. Make an eye contact with a stranger. Okay. Ladies and gentlemen, you just made music with strangers. I don't know of anything more hopeful than that. Imagine if the leaders of world's warring factions were in this room. And imagine if leaders in Washington, D.C. of our own political warring factions were in this room. And we just did Hey Baby together. <laughs> that makes me pretty hopeful. Something good's got to happen from that, right? So the musical relationship we're talking about before. This thing over here that we were doing when I walked in earlier with the with the subconscious and the music at the most basic level. That's what's called passive listening. Living by music, like I said before, is passive listening. It's great. We get the effects of the happy, healthy, safer, safer more fulfilled, more hopeful stuff. But the moment we start singing along with the music, or the moment we start dancing to the music, or tapping our foot, or clicking our fingers, or whatever, we're moving along the music relationship continuum from passive listening to something in the middle that we call active listening. Active listening is what you do when you go to a concert, hopefully. You were actively listening to Andrew earlier, and you're going to listen, actively listen to a really cool uh, duo here in a second after I'm done. I hope you're going to do 
what we do when we actively listen, and that is this. Music is not just the wallpaper around you. It's not just the environment anymore. You're paying attention to what's happening in it. Remember I talked about tension and release? You're paying attention to tension and release. You're looking for it. You're, you're building a set of expectations about how release, tension will be built and release will come. And you don't have to be very musical to do this. You don't have to know a lot about music or perform it a lot. You don't have to be Andrew Sohn. You can be us. That's a really great thing. So I would charge you the next time you're listening to a piece you like, like the duo that's coming up here. Maybe you've heard their music before, maybe you haven't. Try and hear something that they're doing that, you, that really stands out to you, that makes you think about how getting from one moment to the next can be done in music, can be done through music. That will open up the bandwidth by virtue of how music's power to make you healthier and happier and safer and more hopeful and more fulfilled the potential is much greater the more you listen, the more actively you listen. When we listen actively, we are living through music. We're getting from this moment to this moment, and instead of music being around us while we're thinking about something else, we're thinking about the music at that moment. Maybe sometimes we get distracted and think about that bread we didn't buy at the, at the bilo on the way home that we got to get. But by and large, we're, we're, we're sort of living through the music by virtue of having it be what we're thinking about, for getting from this moment to the next. How do we do that? You listen to sounds only. You, don't pay, you can pay attention to the words, and the words are important if they're songs with words, but what's really powerful about music are the sounds, not the words. So you have to pay attention to the sounds. How, does the, how do the strings build there? That is so cool. I love that sound, the bass line. Hey, baby, when we're listening, if you weren't singing Hey, Baby and listening, you would have really gotten into the bass line. The bass line is what gets us going on Hey, Baby. Figure out where the tensions and the, and the, and the uh, releases are. And when you do that, the whole concept of hopefulness and music becomes conscious to us. We are making decisions and, and, and building expectations about how one thing will become another. And if, even though we're only doing it in music, it seeps up into the rest of our lives. I'm telling you, science shows this. I'm living proof of it. Every one of us that lives a musical life is living proof of this. We're hopeful people because we, we take that sense of of building of tension and release and anticipation of what will come and whether or not the composer or the performer delivers it to us the way we want, all of that makes us more hopeful people and it makes us conscious about the hopefulness. So passive listening, living by music. We move on the continuum of musical relationship experience to active listening where we're living through the music, where it's really on our mind, where we're paying attention to it, where the power of all those five conditions I keep mentioning hits us with greater poignancy than it does on the passive side. And then we go further over the continuum to Hey Baby, where we sing with strangers and clap with our friends to Hey Baby and we make music. And when we make music, the power of those five conditions to affect our lives, there is no bandwidth anymore. It's gone. The limits are gone. There is no limit to how hopeful we can be when we make music. There's no limit to how healthy or happy we can be. There's no limit to how safe our communities can be. Music has that kind of power when we're conscious over it and when we're making it like we did with Hey Baby, like Andrew did earlier, like that duo is going to do right after I'm done here. So why don't we as society, society seek every opportunity we can as individuals and as as collectives, to live through music, actively listen, and live in music as often as we can. Performing is living in music. It's getting from this moment to this moment, being obsessed with music, thinking about nothing but music, like we did when we did Hey Baby. We got from this moment to that moment, and we were not thinking about the bread or the bilo. We were thinking about, my gosh. <laughs> we were living in music. How can we have a society where we live in music more often, where that bandwidth has no limit on how those five conditions can affect us? We have to create that society. There are not many societies like that that exist. Well, how do we know how often to make music, to live in music, or to live through music and actively listen? Science has not told us that yet. It hasn't caught up. Science doesn't know a lot about aesthetics yet. It hasn't caught up with us like the talks this morning where science proves all sorts of realities in our lives hasn't caught up with music yet or how aesthetics affect us in this way. So how often should we do it? Well, I like to think 
that because music has those five conditions, that healthier, happier, safer, more hopeful, more fulfilled thing, food does at least three of them, happier, healthier, and more fulfilled. So we know, even though science can't tell us in music how often we should have those kinds of experiences and live in and through music, science has told us we should eat three times a day. Centuries of study has told us that. Now, I have two grown daughters who are pregnant, and their doctor tells them they have to eat six times a day. So if we take a reality of three times a day to six times a day that we need to eat, then let's take three to six times a day that we want to actively listen every day. Three to six times minimum. It's hard to make music that often, so let's just extrapolate it out and do it three to six times minimum a week. If we're making music three to six times minimum a week and listening to music, living through music three to six times a day, we have the kind of musical America that will make us happier, healthier, safer, more fulfilled, and more hopeful all the time. And why would we not choose that? Right. At the University of South Carolina, we're doing something important that I want to spend just a moment telling you about. Because this environment I'm talking about, this community where we make music as often as we can, and where we listen actively as often as we can, has to be created. And it can't be created just by us. It has to be created by experts and people that know how to supply musical possibilities in our community. I train professional musicians at the University of South Carolina. Professional musicians have been trained in America for years to be the best musicians they can be. The best singers, the best teachers, performers, composers, lecturers, writers, the best they can be. And that's great and it has to continue. It can't be anything but that. However, it needs to be more than that. Professional musicians now have to be ones that are trained to understand societal musical need and to deliver on it, to figure out how to take their desires and their talents, unite them into a passion, and then find the world's great need for their passion. It might be a community band. It might be a, a community music school. It might be a, an activity at a church for, for some students that of some young people or some older people who want to have a musical experience of making or listening actively more often. We're good at making concerts, but we're not good at creating these opportunities to live in music. At Carolina, we call the training that we are doing for professional musicians of tomorrow music leadership. We're trying to make music leaders for communities who understand how to take their passion and their desire and their talent and, and direct it at musical need. When that kind of thing happens, and we have societies where we have that much music being made, and we're all into it the way we can, the power of hopefulness in music ended the Cold War. Hopefulness in music helped cease apartheid. Hopefulness in music is providing us all over time the civil rights in America that were due. And it's especially poignant to remember that today. Why would we not seek an opportunity to live in a society like that where the power of music's hopefulness is at its full bore at us? Now I'd like for you to stand as I finish and do one thing with me. Everybody stand up as we finish. I'd like for you to repeat after me this phrase in, in sections like we do an oath. It's not really an oath, okay? But it's kind of like an oath. Hey, music. Hey, music. With you, we know With you we know we can change the world. We can change the world. One more time. Hey music. Hey music. With you we know. With you we know. We can change the world. We can change the world. All right, ready? <laughs> you we know we can change the world give yourselves a hand you were great thank you